Well, today's interview is with a guy known as the Good Vibe Ambassador. He is the official DJ for Southern Miss. You know him. You love him. There he is, Southern Miss. The one and only <laughs> DJ Cujo is my interview today. And DJ Cujo, how are you doing, man? I'm great, man. We uh, had some great wins this week uh, from the basketball team. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Truly appreciate it. Man, I'm so thankful for you and everything you do for Southern Miss. I mean, you, you, you see me, man. My bromance is high on social media with DJ <laughs> Cujo. I, mean, I make no, no, you know, I'm not shy about, no it. I mean, about I it. everything you do, man. I love everything you do. But, but DJ oh, Cujo, you. let's talk about, man, your love for Southern Miss. What, what do you love most about being a Golden Eagle? I, I love the people, man. Um, from an early age, uh, my grandmother was the head custodian um, at Southern Miss, and she instilled that love uh, for the black and gold in me. Um, I remember being a kid helping her uh, clean the rock and uh, uh, picking up stuff and dropping uh, towels and stuff in, in, in Reed Green when, during the MK Turk era. Um, so, yeah, I, I've, I love being a Golden Eagle man. Oh, man, that's awesome. Great stuff right there. All right. all right. So before we get into all the fun DJ stuff that you do for Southern Miss, I'd love for people to get to know more about you, DJ Cujo. So I guess first up, an easy question. Man, what's your real name? Okay. So my real name is Marcus Carr. Um, a lot of people think my mom named me Cujo, but my real <laughs> name is Marcus. I was thinking um, DJ first name. Last name Cujo, but it's just Marcus Carr. Okay, good. <laughs> right, right. Uh, born and raised in Hattiesburg, grew up on Arlett Street, uh, went to Lily Burning Magnet School, went to Rowan, uh, Hattiesburg High, finished at Oak Grove. Um, I was in sales for the most part of my, uh, well, went to uh, Jones and Pearl River, uh, finished at Pearl River, then transferred to Southern Miss, uh, started working with at and and the sales process from AT and T, um, I used that to learn to sell myself, which then in turn I started DJing. Um, that's pretty much me in a <laughs> in a short story. No, but I I love it. It, it. it gets everybody understanding. You know, you're a Hattiesburg guy. Everybody notices some of the school names you mentioned. And uh, but you did hit on something right there because I mean, being as big a DJ as you are, you got to have for love a love for music, like a real hardcore love for music. Oh, yeah. Where did your love for music begin? Would you say? Um, that came from my mom and dad. Um, I can remember times where we would go to the coast. Um, I think, I think Gulfport had the only Sam's at the time, and I remember my mom and my dad. We used to have this big Astro van that we could. We would drive down to the coast. They'll give me a big tub of popcorn. Uh, we'll ride back, listen to Isley Brothers and Anita Baker and Atlantic Star and um, Parliament. And my dad had this big record collection. He passed away in 2021. He had this big record collection. We would always listen to music. He's a musician. He was a musician as well. He played uh, bass. He played keyboard, drums, uh, lead guitar. Um, he, when uh, he was on the uh, circuit when James Brown, the Osleys, and um, uh, Bobby, Bl uh, Bobby uh, Rush and Bobby Blue Band, and all he uh, a lot of stars came through the Hattiesburg area that he played music for. Um, so yeah, my, and my mom is a singer, uh, she still sings to this day, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's in my blood. Oh man, yeah, this is a great way to put it. Music's in your blood, and and but now I, I, I will say I'm the only one that doesn't know how to play an instrument. My my well, oldest daughter, my oldest daughter. Well, I mean, I, 
my dad said being a DJ is an instrument. It's, it's yeah, instru- I mean, I'm gonna always but, say it's an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my my youngest my youngest daughter plays drums. My oldest daughter, she's a singer. She plays uh, guitar a little bit. She plays piano, and I think she plays drums as well. So. Um, yeah, I, I I picked up the the smaller end of the musical spectrum when it comes to instruments. Oh man, that, don't let him, that's not an instrument. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, don't let Mexican. Oh man, that's an instrument. You are very talented. But thank you. You know, I see the the love for music clearly. I mean, it's just in your blood, like you said. But your path to becoming a DJ, like you just this is where I want to go. When did you kind of know this? This is where I want to go. That happened. That was all God's plan. Um, I would say 2008, 2009, I was in a very low place. Um, I had a friend that was a bartender at a a club that I later became known for. Uh, It was called Club Oasis at the time. And uh, she was bartending. She was like, come over, have some drinks, clear your head. So I went over there. drank a little bit and then one of my friends uh one of my friends who so if you as the students know me as dj cujo my mentor was the cujo of that era dj sweat um and he was djing at a club that night and he asked me to come over i came over after i had been drinking (laughs) and uh I, I, I did not drive though. I did not drive. I came <laughs> over after uh after drinking. And he passed me a mic, and I just started talking on the mic. and And he gave me seventy five dollars at the end of the night. And I was like, "What's this for?" He was like, "Man, you did a great job. Can you come back next week?" So fast forward, um, I started being the hype man for um, about five of the major DJs in the Hattiesburg Laurel area. Uh, DJ Big Daddy. Uh, DJ Bird, DJ Sweat, DJ Goldie, and DJ Trey Z. Um, Michael Jackson passed, I want to say 2000, was it 2000? It was 2008 to 2009. That's my DJ anniversary. Um, So uh, when he passed, I used to always do mixes at USM and and Pearl River and Jones. I was one of the only ones that was doing like the down lap. Well, not the only one, but I would download Napster, download someone's off of Napster and make mix CDs for all the students that we went to school with. Um, so during that time, I had made a mix. It was like one of my first mixes. I think it's still on Facebook and I look horrible. Um, but it was, a Michael, <laughs> it, was a, it was a Michael Jackson mix. And uh, DJ so it was like, I'm going to play it in the club. He played it in the club. These are like 17, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds just vibing out to Michael Jackson. And he played it twice. And I think he was getting ready to move. And that's when my DJ story began. He was like, I got to I gotta teach you, teach you the ropes. Oh, that, that's very cool right there. And, and the name DJ Cujo, when did that stick? When you, Like, this is my name? Or how, how, how did it come about for that name? So the name DJ Cujo actually came from the Zeta Phi Beta chapter, uh, Lambda Theta at Southern Miss. Um, I was in a youth group uh, called Sigma Beta. And some of the uh, some of the ladies, my dad is a my, my, my biological dad is a member of Omega Psi Phi. And they were like, when you come to when you come to USM, your line name is going to be Cujo. And so my freshman year, nobody called me Marcus. Everybody that talked to me called me Cujo and it stuck. So and then it just stuck. And then what a name it is, man. It's, it's just like. It's got power to it, DJ Kuchi. <laughs> I love it. So, but, but DJ, thanks so much for the backstory right there. Kind of getting the vibe. You know, people know more about you, how you got to be such a big DJ in the, the state of Mississippi. And I, I kind of, I'm very curious because the whole art of DJing, how do you prepare for a live set? You know, I mean, I know different sets, different venues, but kind of like a mean way you, you prepare for a set. Um, I, I go into it. Thinking about songs I want to play. 75% of the time, I don't get to those songs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I just try to I, I try to have a skeleton of what I'm going to play. Um, I really go off the energy and the vibe of the, of, of the crowd. I would take an example of a wedding. I find that one mom, that one auntie, that one person get their head bothered. I'm all about energy and energy transfer. 
And once you get that person energized, it moves around the world to where we have a collective party now. Man, that, that's great. And, and I'm glad you kind of said that because there is a fun element. Of, I know you work tons of venues, but a fun element, I'm sure, of working a wedding reception, a wedding reception that starts getting fun. Oh, Man. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This any good wedding reception stories or like moments like this crowd is this is fun. Um, oh, so many. Uh, <laughs> Second, is, a wedding reception, man, is, is, is one of my favorite times I've ever had. Let's see. I can think of a time it was my first time DJing in Destin. Um, it was hot. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I take that back. I take that back. My my most memorable wedding is the time I had to cook and DJ at the same time. So the bride, it, 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 it was, it was a, it was like a very small intimate wedding and I knew most of the people in the wedding and I think somebody either got sick or they had to leave and we needed to make pasta. None of the bridesmaids knew how, knew how to cook pasta right, especially for that large amount of people. So I'm doing prelude music and I'm also making the pasta and I think I made the sauce as well, um, going <laughs> back in and out of the house to make sure that the music is still going and and make sure the pasta is, is cooked to al dente. Um, that might be the most memorable uh, reception. <laughs> and we had like a great time. Like afterwards, we ended up doing karaoke. I think like my time... I think they only paid for like five hours and I ended up doing like 10 or 12. We were there doing till like two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, it was just like amazing. Oh, I, that, that's awesome, man. The cooking DJ. And and I love that too. <laughs> You're having so much dang fun. And I, I do this for free and let's just, let's keep partying yeah. on everybody. That, that's awesome, man. If you want to break the rock, you need to make yourself indestructible. If you want to play between the hedges, you need to work out there. Up there, down there, everywhere. If you want to reach the win bar, you need to lose sleep, lose count. You need to play every game like you got nothing to lose. Um, and you kind of said something right there where you point so you pointed an eye in the crowd, you pointed, you know, whoever out in the crowd, that's getting them going. You think this might get the crowd going. And I know there's kind of an art to moving the crowd a certain way. So if you don't mind navigating me through this, if there's a proper way to do it, when the crowd's kind of too hyped, you got to bring them down. When the crowd's too down, you got to bring them up. I mean, do you have a, like a yeah, mindset um, that you get into? When I, when, I, when I go from party song after party song after party song, um, I can tell when people are getting tired. I, I'm always <laughs> looking out in the crowd and I just bring them down for a little bit. And then I see, okay, they arrested and I bring them right back up. Um, it, 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 it's an ebb and flow um, with anything in life, uh, but especially when, when you're trying to keep the dance floor full and you don't want them to leave um, or you don't want to poop them out too quick. Oh, oh I love that. You, I mean, you as a DJ, you can – Kind of feel the energy correctly, like yeah. feel it almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly, I mean, you're kind of exactly, exactly, exactly. Interesting, man. Getting to some Southern Miss events where I've seen in person, you get the crowd really hyped. That's for dang sure. Reed Green sellout last year. I saw it in person, oh, man. man. But uh, you so worked so many Southern Miss events and, and stuff in the area. But what are some of your favorite Southern Miss events that you work? Um, I would say as of late the. The, uh, I've been doing the uh, Friday night at Spirit Park kickoff for the season. Um, I've done them the past two or three years. Um, that that pit rally is always lit. Like it's always a fun time. The students are out there. The Chili is out there. The Southern Misses are out there. The Seymour is out there. And like um, those Southern Miss faithful that are looking forward to a great season are out there to pump. We we just partying and having a great time. And then they, the uh, incoming freshmen are doing Screaming Eagles right after um, and getting them into the tradition of the black and gold. And it's an amazing time. Um, all my events with uh, the Southern Miss Activities Council, SMAC, I love, I love working with them. Uh, they were the first organization to hire me on campus. 
um, 14 years ago. And I'm, I have an event with him uh, Wednesday. <laughs> I just had an event with him Friday. And it was, I want to say it was the wind chill factor was like 19 degrees. And we almost had 500 students out there partying. Oh, um, man. So that, that, that shows you the love they have for me and I have for them because I could not feel my fingers. <laughs> so, <laughs> DJ with numb fingers, man. I love it, it was it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible, but it was a great time. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you, then that's cool. You, you've seen so many students come through now where you're a big part of their initial experience of Southern Miss, man. That's a that's a cool thing. And, um, and even but, at, I was gonna say, I'm sorry, uh even after uh I've done so many weddings um from Southern Miss alone, um like it, it ends up like a big family like is 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 great um uh it, there's nothing like it there really isn't it really isn't oh that, that's awesome man yeah stuff like that man it just makes southern miss so special and just it, it's much more of a i don't know it, it just like a, like a family vibe in a way like yep. you, you see old friends i mean i, I just uh, I, I miss living in Hattiesburg in the area, man. Like I'm out here in Cajun country, man, but this is such a good vibe. <laughs> Especially with you and so involved now, man. I got to get back out of this quick. But, um, hey, DJ, you have seen me loud on social media about, right. you know, how do we ramp up the experience at The Rock? Well, here's my example. You put a platform in the middle of the student section. You put DJ Cujo on that, getting the crowd hype. There's immediate stuff. I mean, you may not be able to answer this. I just think that's a great one. But future Southern Miss events or athletic events, are there bigger plans for you or maybe things, kind of ideas for the future? We, we've talked. We've, we've talked. I, I think the biggest thing is logistics of how to sound-wise. Uh, I, I recently went uh, walking around the rock, so there's plenty of power that I can plug into, but plugging into the sound system by the student section. Um, I could DJ inside the announce table, but that would take away from what we would be trying to accomplish, um, yeah. which would be me being in the student section. So um, we've talked. So we shall see what the future holds. Um, it, it would be it would be great if it happened. We uh, students have been uh, campaigning for this for 12 years. Um, it is it's crazy that my first athletic event was in 2023 when I started DJing for the campus 14 years ago uh, because this energy has always been on campus. Like I can I have videos upon videos upon videos of the energy from the students uh, from me DJing events and it's just now spilling over to athletics, which I mean, hey. Better late than never. Well, hey, you you said hype man early in the interview. You need a hype man for a DJ Cujo at the rock movement. I'm your guy. Just you let me know. I was going to say, hey, let's make it happen. Come on, let me know. <laughs> let's make it happen. <laughs> let's make it happen. <laughs> so, but, hey, DJ Cujo, thank you so much for uh, this interview. And I kind of want to even have people get to even know more about you, man. You're really behind okay. the scenes. So are you down with maybe fun five questions, fun topics? Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. So first up, you know, you're a diehard Southern Miss fan, just like me. Who's your favorite Southern Miss athlete or athletes of all time? Okay, so I have two. Um, and I'm, I'm biased because one is my big brother. One is my little sister. Um, that would be Todd Pinkston. Uh, great wide receiver uh, for Southern Miss Philadelphia. Yeah, Todd um, very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Todd. And then my little sister, Dominique Davis. Um, she's an amazing, amazing athlete for a uh, women's basketball team. So those will be my two favorites. Oh, yeah. Todd Pinkson. I saw it in person, man, back in 97. He's only a sophomore, and I'm like, he's special. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Dominique, she does move sometimes. Like, she break, I man, break both I, ankles. I <laughs> break both ankles. <laughs> I promise you. Well, she, uh, I just posted a picture talking about me uh, – taking pictures like a proud dad and, and that I, I know that photo was uh, taken of her trying to go to the hoop. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. I love that. Great, great choices, obviously right there. Um, for the Southern Miss fan base, if you, there's a second question, you had a song maybe, all right, that might be as well universally accepted to get them going, get them kind of hyped up. What, what, what's maybe a song you, you could pick or two even 
I might, I might get as many so people I, I can. I, I was possible. gonna say I, I do have two. Uh, for some reason, Swag Surf gets the students going. Uh, like, I, I mean, it, it, over it, there, man, the game. <laughs> <laughs> it gets the students going. Um, and then for like a universal, um, I played uh, Thunderstruck, uh, ACDC, um, <laughs> at the game at the game Saturday, and the energy was electric. Uh, I played that in Welcome to the Jungle, and President uh, Paul looked up at me and gave me the. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I would say I would say Swag Surf and Thunderstruck would be my my two go to hype hype songs. Oh, that that's awesome, and that's got to be a good feeling when when Joe Paul gives you the thumbs up, yeah. man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah he uh, he was actually a primary reason why I was at that game February night. Um, yeah. Nobody really gets the student experience from such a high level that I've almost seen. I mean, you know. Because, because really, like, I, I knew Joe Paul so well. He was the, the director of student affairs when I was there, man. And he's right. just a beloved guy. You know, he just right. he started the student level and now the president level. You know, but he's always got that student vibe. So, oh, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting the vibe. And what better than DJ Cujo? Hey, DJ Cujo, what's a favorite venue that you've ever worked at? Um, It would be downtown Hattiesburg uh, when we do Midnight on Front Street. Uh, we've grown that from 7,000 people to almost 16,000 people within uh, within five years. And just being able to DJ for my hometown, uh, seeing people I grew up with, went to school with, uh, people that mentored me, just everybody, the whole community out there showing love and enjoying the music like that, by far is my favorite event every year. Uh, midnight on Front Street. Uh, that, that's incredible, and to see how big downtown Hattiesburg's become since I graduated in '98, it, it's it's a cool little place. That's awesome, man. Great story there. Oh, yeah. You love that locally, but maybe what's a dream venue for you to work out one day that you're like, man, I've made it. This is my. Well, this is <laughs> well I, I'm putting it out in the atmosphere that I will be DJing for an NFL team soon. Um, Awesome. I, I've, I've DJed in Mercedes Benz Stadium for the Falcons, but I am a Saints fan. <laughs> who <laughs> so that? I hope who that? Uh, who that? I hope <laughs> to DJ in uh, Caesars uh, Superdome soon for the oh, team. Hey, that's now that's cool. Wow, dang! I'm gonna I'm tell somebody I knew you one day. I, I knew him. <laughs> I had him on my show. <laughs> so, DJ Cujo, last question, man, real quick, ready for the fun five questions. What's your greatest accomplishment so far in life? Being a father to two amazing girls. Uh, my my oldest daughter, Mackenzie, um, and my youngest daughter, Angel. Uh, I see so much of myself in them and um, definitely a proud, proud of the young women that they're becoming. Uh, my oldest is about to graduate college. Uh, my youngest is about to graduate high school. And I'm just... Just proud of them. Um, that that definitely is my greatest accomplishment so far is just being able to be their dad. Oh man, that's awesome! I'm a dad too. <laughs> There's nothing like it. Nothing like nah, it. So, no. man, great. Couldn't be a better answer than being a dad. <laughs> I love it, man. So good stuff right there. A little fun five questions, five fun five topics from DJ Cujo. And as we kind of wrap things up, I mean, guys like you and me, we've seen a lot of Southern Miss athletic stuff: wins, losses, highs, lows. We have seen a lot. Right. For 2024 in the future, DJ Cujo, what's a message you might have for the fans to kind of pump a little energy, get them going for the future? One, support your teams. Uh, whether they win or losing, they need your support, and especially women's sports. I I can't say it enough. Uh, the women's basketball team supports me at every turn whether it's a music video or, or being in 19 degree weather to, to party with me, they are there. And I want our students, I want our alumni, um, I want our faculty, I want the city of Hattiesburg to get behind these girls. They, they play too well not to have the same energy um, that the men have. And even with the softball team, they're a great team as well, the soccer team, um, support women's sports, the volleyball team. I'm I'm also their DJ. 
Um, and we've seen some record crowds this season as me being their DJ. Uh, support those girls. Uh, they they do great work. So my biggest message to our Black and Gold family is support women's sports as much as you can. Man, that, that, that's a great way to put it. And DJ Cujo, I mean, I'll admit it on there. I could do a better job myself. I get caught up in the big three sports. I do. It's just, I do. So great, great message. There's a lot of good competition and athleticism going on the women's side of things for sure. It's a great I, message. And I, w- I will say, I never watched volleyball before. That, man, it, it's, oh. Uh, and I can say it, and the, the university can't say it. I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the university. They sell beer. You can be you can wow. get beer at the game. I think they sell beer at the Reed Green as well. Um, yeah. I'm not quite sure. They they can't they can't say that, but I can say that they sell beer at the Rock. There you, like, there you. <laughs> get a brew, get a brew, and come watch some good sports. Man, support that, our you, teams. You, I wouldn't be surprised you sold a lot of people in that last comment right there, man. I mean, <laughs> beer. <laughs> Just a man, great message, man. Looking out for for all avenues of Southern Miss athletics, and that's what makes you such a tremendous ambassador for Southern Miss, man. Uh, and I couldn't be more happy to get you on my show. And I can't thank you enough for being on my show today, DJ Cujo. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I think a great way, though, for DJ Cujo and myself to close the show might be to give everybody a big. Southern Miss. To the top. To the top.